this is Matt Rouse with Western Rivers Fly Fisher. It's been a while since we've done a tying demo. I'm going to do a marabou articulated leech. Kind of don't have a cool name for it, but it uses some pretty simple materials overall, easily obtained, not very expensive. Fly has a few steps in it, so it's going to be a little bit longer tie than some of the other videos we've done. Um, but let me kind of run you through what we're going to use. The fly itself is primarily marabou, so we've got tan and like a burnt orange marabou or kind of a root beer color this time around. We're going to use those. We're going to use a duck flank fiber. This is the fall. There's lots of duck feathers floating around the shop with all the hunters and so on, so we're going to use that. We're going to use some dry fly hackle, and the grade is pretty much up to you. You can use cheap stuff or expensive stuff. Um, and then I'm going to throw a couple of nifty looking hen hackle cape feather fibers on there just for coolness. Looks kind of nice. Anyways, that in conjunction with a couple of streamer hooks, I'm going to use a B10S stinger on the back. One of my absolute favorite hooks if anybody who knows me knows that I really think that that's one of the better ones to use. And in this case, I'm using a, a medium length straight eye streamer hook. I'm actually going to eventually cut the front hook off the fly. I just run a single hook fly. I primarily fish this on a swing. You could leave the front hook, you could leave them both, you can leave the rear hook. It's kind of up to you. There's some advantages and pros and cons to each one of those approaches. Um, and I'll talk about that a little bit when we get to the connecting phases of it. But basically, and then a little bit of wire, and I'm just going to use a little bit of a braid for some body flash. Now this fly can get pimped out and you can add a whole bunch of things to it, but the basic steps of the tie are pretty simple and, and kind of repetitive. So I'm going to start off with the rear hook. This is just a B10S stinger. I'm just going to start some thread on the hook. Um, one of the things that I've started to really focus on when I'm tying streamer flies is making them durable without adding too much stuff or keeping everything kind of simple. So in this case, to make this fly more durable, what I'm going to do is I'm only going to tie on the front quarter or so, front third of the shank of the hook here. I'm going to leave this back portion bare, so when a fish actually grabs this and starts wrestling with the hook a little bit, it's actually not going to be able to grab any materials on the fly. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a fairly nice wide um, marabou blood feather, um, and I'm going to strip some of the base feathers off of it. We're going to palmer this feather which is a little tricky at first, but those of you who've seen my Platte River Spider video probably have seen this technique before. So we make a little palm like that. I'm going to find a matching uh, rust colored or burnt all or orange or whatever we want to call this. So I'm going to pop one of those out and just like before, now this one's a pretty full feather. Actually, it's two feathers, which is why it's so full. So, just like before, I'm going to strip some of the base fibers off. You can save these and make this tail or use it for other applications if you like. I mean, it's kind of wasteful, but they just palmer better if it's just a small palm of the marabou. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take and find the tip of the marabou feather. And one of the ways to do that is kind of wet it and pull it forward. So, you just have the very tip top of the feather. You can see how it's kind of perpendicular in most of the places, but you've got the front. I'm going to take and tie that in by its tip, make a couple of wraps forward, and then tie back. And we're going to lay that right on top of the hook here for the moment. And then I'm going to take the other palm, repeat the same process, find the tip, wet it with our fingers a little bit to make it into just one solid piece that we can tie down. And then we're going to lay this right on top of the previous feather so that they're kind of spooning each other. Ideally you want the curvature of the feather to be facing down. Notice how it's got that kind of concave and it's facing down right now. That's going to be proper. We can take these tip fibers here if we like after we've gotten a couple of securing wraps and just wrap them backwards kind of out of the way. It just means we don't need to trim. Then we're going to advance our thread forwards to the eye. Like I said this is going to be a pretty simple step takes a little practice when you first start palmer and marabou together like this. You want to make sure that your fibers are flat and you lay them together. It's giving me a hard time here. Rusty. Anyways, so you take the two together and then stroke them back a little bit. And then we're just going to advance those turkey marabou feathers forward. 
It, the thing I like about this style of tying is that marabou is available in every color under the rainbow. And so making your own color selections is really easy to do because you can start off with whatever flavors you like. Some of them tan and rusty like this I like a lot. I also like black and olive. I like white and gray or just plain white. Yellow and brown or yellow and rusty is a really good brown trout color. Now notice as you're tying here, you can get pieces of the marabou fibers that are kind of trapping themselves. And what you want to do is just kind of pick those out a little bit. And go back in later and clean it up, but it's best if you're kind of cleaning as you go. So you kind of pick that out and loosen up those fibers if it's not coming freely. This one has a lot of web, and so the webbier the feather, the more challenging it is to work with at times. But if you're just patient and kind of play with it, you'll get it to look pretty sharp. And this has a fairly natural taper. We'll get to the eye of the fly. And then just like those who have seen my tying before, I use one twist to trap the material. Pull it out of the way. Make two turns, three turns in front. And go back through the material again. Give it a couple more turns and you get a nice clean head without too much space. Now we're going to take these two marabou fibers and get in there with my fine tip scissors, nip the excess off, and sort of back a little bit, a couple more turns. Again, I don't have anything on the very rear of the hook so that the fish, when they actually eat this thing, hopefully won't chew up the marabou too quickly. Um, I like to last a little bit. I'm going to take just a small amount of a thin head cement. This is Fritz von Schlegel stuff. It penetrates real well. And let that soak in. I usually try to apply my first layer of glue before I whip finish so my whip finishes actually seep into the glue for what it's worth. A couple times. Always whip finish twice in case one comes loose. You still have one holding. And trim that out. Okay, so that's the trailer portion of it. It's not very fancy, just a marathon tap. Now we're going to take the longer, the big streamer hook here. We're going to lock that into the vise. This is a Dyna King Barracuda Jr. This is a really nice vise for this kind of stuff, which I'll show you why in just a moment here. So I'm going to start my thread on the hook shank towards the back. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of 30 pound nautical wire. Now you can use a variety of different materials to attach your stinger hooks um, or swinging articulated hooks. Um, this just happens to be one of my preferred methods and, and again different choices exist. Nautical wire is really easy to work with. It's a little bit expensive but it's good stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start the legs right on top or start it with just a little bit extending towards the front of the fly here. A couple of turns, locking it down to about where it starts to bend. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this back towards me and I'm going to tie down that folded over section. Oops. Now, like I said in the initial part of the video, I'm just eventually going to trim off the bend of this hook and the rear hook here, or on the front hook, excuse me. I just don't feel the need for two hooks all the time. A lot of articulated streamer guys really like the second hook or want the hook on the front. Um, again, there's some arguments on both sides and I just happen to prefer the rear hook. I swing these a lot versus casting them and stripping them. So for what it's worth, when you're stripping flies, it seems to be more important to have the hook in the front. When you're swinging flies, they attack the fly from the back and having it in the rear seems to help. Okay, so I've got one leg of the wire tied down. I'm not going to put any beads on this one. I prefer not to when I keep him single hook. So we're going to loop this back, leaving about a half an inch loop or a little bit beyond the bend of the, the hook. We're going to make some turns on it. Again, this is a pretty durable, we're using only 70, odd thread, or 70 denier thread here. Which is pretty small for most articulated flies, but I find that they're just as strong if you make a lot of turns and it takes less space. So, 
give it a couple of good solid wraps. Every now and then you need to flatten out your thread. All right, with this many turns, you can end up snapping it just because of the amount of twists in the thread. Now we're going to fold it back over again. Doesn't need to be perfect, but if you size it outright, notice I didn't really need to cut any more wire off. Well, that's partially intentional and partial duck loops. See what I mean? Didn't untwist the thread enough. So, on light thread like this, that's a little bit more likely to happen. I probably should be using like 210 or something like that, but I find that I still do the light stuff and just do more turns. Never had one come apart, even on big fish before. But it's not impossible, I suppose. Okay, so now we've got the rear trailer hook secured solidly. Spin that thread down, and I'm going to bring thread to the back. I'm going to take a little bit of this fluorescent orange mini flat braid. It just gives the fly a little bit of a hot spot right at the butt. Call it a little flare, whatever you like. Make some turns, lock it down, and then we're just going to make a couple of turns over the back of that wire. Kind of like a hot butt on a green butt skunk or something wrap it over itself a couple of times. Okay. So then, we've got this ribbon. We've secured the ribbon. I'm going to go ahead and trim it down. Okay. Now, we're going to take a dry fly cape. In this case, this is just a basic grizzly cape. Most people use the stuff up here for dry flies. Well, this stuff down towards the base here is actually really nice for this kind of fly. It's long, it's stiff, and frankly, you're not going to tie all that many size 6 dry flies with this. Um, it gives you a use for somewhat otherwise underutilized tackle. So, I'm trimming the excess off the base here, just keeping it a little cleaner. And then I'm actually going to take and find the tip, do a little split there, a little folding. We're going to tie in the tip of this grizzly hackle. A couple of nice securing wraps, get it on there solid. Generally I favor a couple more turns versus heavier stuff. So we'll trim some of the excess fibers off. They're a little loosey-goosey. Now this underwing of dry fly hackle actually serves a really important purpose on these kinds of flies for me. Um, this is borrowed from the steelhead universe where they're often utilizing underwing props to expand their materials outward. You can do this with a whole bunch of different stuff. It could be chenille, it could be um, anything that's got stiffness and some bulk to it and or bulk. So you can spin materials into dubbing loops and prop things up or you can use hackle or there's a variety of different techniques. Um, but basically, I'm making a bit of a dam on the fly where it can hold up a front prop of marabou. I want the fly to essentially be hollow. So that there are bulky materials on the outside that make the fly look really big, but really, it's all illusion. Okay, so just like I normally do, go through, trap the hackle once, a couple of turns in front, back through, trap the hackle, a couple of turns, and then we'll nip off the excess. So, now we have this small thread down. We're going to go ahead and take our marabou feathers, and just like we did before, we're going to find two good candidates. Not so webby, longer fibers are better. I'm going to grab a tan one first. Looks like this one looks pretty solid. And we are going to make a palm just like we did before. Again, a lot of these flies have repetitive techniques. Not to mention you get better as you practice it. Find the tip. I'll tie this one in right away. I'll find the, the rusty one in just a moment. A couple of turns, securing it. And a rusty one. Again, the thinner the fibers and the less web, generally speaking, the easier it is to palmer these together. 
And again, if you're conservative with your materials, you can go a long ways. If you have a phone in the background, you can also make flies. It's all right. I'm just kidding. Anyways, um, so once again, we're going to repeat. Grab a tip here. Wet it. Stick it over the top of the first feather. Now, I may not have aligned them palm together this time. So sometimes that means that you have to fight it a little bit more, but it shouldn't be too bad. I'm going to advance my thread to about an eye length behind the end of the, or in front, or behind the eye of the fly. Just so that's going to be my stop point, and that's where I'm going to put my collar and my overwing. So we're going to take this guy here, these two. Pull it back slightly, and then we'll start advancing them forward just like we did with the rear portion. Now again, with that underwing prop, it's going to help keep this thing out and bulky, but again, be really light and easy to cast. I think a lot of streamers get too heavy to be able to cast them accurately or easily. And those things can, at the end of the day, you know, if you're struggling to throw this overweight fly all day, you may not make that perfect cast to get into that little piece of cover or something like that, or you may just be struggling with wind or with oversized flies. So by having flies that are easy to cast, I think that's kind of an underrated part of tying streamers. Anyways, enough soapbox. So again, we're just kind of pulling things back and out of the way, and cleaning it up, and we'll go through and pick at it a little bit in a second here with our scissors just to make sure everything's loose and flowing as best it can. But you can see we're getting right up to that kind of optimal point I had before. Take those two. I like it when it comes in all nice and clean like that. Okay, now again, just like I said before, we're going to take our scissors and kind of run it in there. Make sure that all the fibers are nice and free to roam. There we be extremely mobile material like that. my excess off. Okay, now I'm going to take this duck flank fiber and tie a bit of a collar. I just think it looks good. Plus this, this fly is pretty much all natural. Just kind of sweet. I mean, synthetics are cool, but flies that are made out of real birds and so on can be kind of neat too. Okay, so we're going to tie in the tip and we do that wet fly style. We kind of split the hackle just like we did with the marabou. Tying it right at the very tip. And I'm going to trim the excess. Okay, I'm going to take this guy. Could have pre folded it, but in this case, I'm just going to give it a little tug, fold it back. Now, this basic concept of how this fly is being tied can be applied with a lot of variation. So, oops, I should probably have a hackle pliers here because. This is Western Rivers and we have had coffee. So, we're just advancing forward a little bit here. I'm a little bit wide of the eye of the fly, so... Normally, we crowd the eyes. This time I might actually have a little bit too much room, but... We'll see. Anyways, it, what I'm saying about variations is you could put lead eyes on this thing, you can put a cone head on this thing, you can put a deer hair head in front of all this stuff, you can do a ton of different things. There's a, the sky's the limit. I mean, you know, again, what you, it's just a basic way to build out a fly that has a nice bait fish paper with materials that are readily available and mainly inexpensive. There's nothing particularly pricey or fancy on this fly, even though I love to use fancy materials. So now we have a little bit of a collar here, and the final piece, like I said, is a little bit of a topping of some of these orange and black lace hen cape. This one's pretty much hammered and at the end of the line, um, but I should be able to find a couple of them that look good. I'm going to grab two from this side, and if I can find two, they're approximately the same size on the other side. You can use them from the same, but it looks a little cleaner if they're from opposite sides. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at the two of them together, kind of lay them on top of each other, and then I'm going to kind of look, where does this sit? What I want is for it to sit just slightly 
in the middle portion of the rear hook. So basically where we started the marabou way back on this rear portion is about where I want this to extend to. So what I'm going to do is I kind of measured it against it. And then I'm going to pull this stuff forward a little bit to mark that tie-in point. Once I've got that point marked, I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to nip the ends off giving myself like a half an inch to work with. And then I'm going to trim this into a bristle brush here. Keep my fingers protecting the rest of it. So notice how I leave a little bit of that fiber. Greg Pearson showed me this trick a while ago and it really helps keep the wing on. So you have this little bristle brush underneath here that allows you to, your thread will grab that really well and it won't go anywhere. Make a couple turns there. Leave that tip section on so you can physically manipulate the feathers if you need to. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the other two feathers and I'm going to measure them against it. That gives me my point. This one's a little shorter, but I think I can make it work. I'm just not going to have as much to trim. Okay, so we have that little... You notice how I'm so much smaller there. We'll flip it over onto the other side here. Try to get it to match up. Now, if you were to look at this over the top here, in fact, I'm going to turn this this way for just a second. Bryce, can you see that? Is that still in focus? How they're kind of splitting over the top of each other? Okay. Hope you guys can see that. Basically, the two stems are facing crisscross over the top of each other. I'm going to make a couple of turns to secure them there, and I'm going to pull them out and out of the way, trimming it as tightly as I can. Hopefully I'll get my thread. There we go. Nip that off. Now my, I'm going to do some pulling stuff around here. We'll make some turns over the top, and viola. We have a fly. And this fly is pretty light and pretty durable, um, because it doesn't have too many moving parts, it's not too expensive, and not that long of an articulated tie. So we've gotten a couple of turns, just like I said before, I'm going to take and put a dab of head cement on, then I'm going to wet finish so it seats into the cement. Once and twice. Okay. Go in and nip the thread off. So, then normally on a fly like this, I like to do a little bit of a hard coat on the, the top of it, which I usually use hard as nails. It's really hard to open it right now. I don't have a, a little pliers to grab it. But anyways, usually a couple of coats of that to make a nice solid head. I mean, this basic style can be used for steel head as well. What we'll eventually do here is, again, as I kind of stated before, I'm going to make this a single hook model, which means I'm going to pull this down and out of the way. In fact, the easiest way to do this is to run it under the sink upside down for a second. All of the hackle gets wet and hangs out of the way. And then you take a heavy duty set of pliers or dikes and nip off the bend. Usually I try to do that inside of a garbage can so it doesn't fly around the room and you step on it later. But just nip that off and that is a pretty solid connection. Anyways, this isn't a particularly big version. I mean, the, the marabou that you choose, the amount of it, how many turns of it, um, will dictate how full the fly is or how long the, you know, you could do two, three, even four feathers if you want it to be a big, bulky, bulky fly. But this is a good fishing size. You can easily cast it on rods as light as four weights or five weights for a fairly big fly that's kind of unusual. Most of those are way too heavy for a little four weight, but this can be thrown, especially if you nip that front hook off and shorten it up because it just gets a little bit lighter. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial um, and uh, we'll see you next time. Come on in when you have any questions or if you want to see some more. So thanks, have a good day.